Hi guys, Sol here from Tasty Records, coming at you with a bit of a different one. Uh, not one necessarily hosted by me, but um, it's a bit of an exhibition tour of a new kind of uh, picture gallery which has been put up in a bar just down the road from us in Altrincham, a place called Swig. Uh, go and check it out if you can. And this is a uh, exhibition of Detroit uh, music posters. Uh, centering around kind of the Stooges, MC5 and a lot of kind of other bands which uh, operated in them areas but they're all but one are an original poster in this exhibition so they're really really cool to see they've been well preserved and um, I'll let the curator Justin take over and kind of talk you through um, the pieces on show here I hope you enjoy it so uh, these are a few of my really Stooges and MC5 posters that were framed and we just decided to display them in the bar because they're really beautiful things and really lovely to see. Uh, there's a bit of a smattering across the years but it mainly ranges from 68 to 1970, 71. Uh, there is a much later Shepherd Fairy poster though uh, but we'll, we'll come to that at the end and discuss that because it, it really uh, 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 relates to uh, 1973 and more power, so really the end of the uh, classic lineup of the stages, or the end of the, the third classic lineup of the stages. If you're already just uh, is a 1960, I think seven, it could be 68, but I think 67. Uh, Gary Grimshaw MC5 poster with a fabulous Lenny Sinclair shot of Rob Tyner obviously in time lapse uh, where he's moving which is just awesome and one of the few posters to actually show any pictures of the MC5. Uh, Black to Calm is the legendary improv MC5 song that wasn't really, well it wasn't officially recorded, there is uh, bootlegs or semi-official stuff and there is an amazing bit of footage where they're on like local TV and that's just incredible when they play that, well worth searching out on YouTube. Really beautiful poster though, obviously quite psychedelic. Uh, but this one's also signed by Gary Grimshaw which is pretty amazing. Yeah, signed by Gary Grimshaw, it's a really beautiful poster. Uh, I probably had this one like 20 years maybe I guess now. Uh, but a truly lovely thing. Uh, that's about it, I've got to say about that. I presume you just edit me out there if you did. <laughs> so two MC5 handbills, these are also for the Grandy Ballroom in Detroit. Uh, not all the Grandy Ballroom events have posters, most of them just have little handbills uh, or flyers uh, or postcards, in fact most of the postcards. If you actually took one out, there's a space for a stamp that would be mailed out to people who I guess you thought these things would be interesting. But there are some handbills though. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the multicoloured MC5, the red, white and blue, uh, that's got a picture of uh, J.C. Crawford, brother, uh, J.C. Crawford, who was uh, the MC5 warm-up bag. Great picture of him. Sadly, no uh, shot of the five on stage. Uh, beautiful, I think that's Gary Grimshaw as well. Um, next door to that, great shot of Wayne Kramer. Uh, that's a bit later. The uh, the word white blue on 69, Wayne Kramer's 70, I think. Uh, Flaming Groovy's on the bill there as well, too. Uh, yeah, I'd say great Wayne Kramer shot. Lovely thing again. So, uh, then we've got another postcard, again for the Grandy Ballroom, which is obviously where a lot of these bands play all the time. I mean, you know, the MC5 are the house band, pretty much, for the Grandy Ballroom. But anyway, this is uh, Cam P and a great shot of Iggy. Uh, with perm pair as well too, so I'm not too sure what was happening there, but it, it's it's pretty interesting to see. There's a really interesting uh, bit of footage on, of Iggy on a Nico video where he's got perm pair as well too, wearing a Rationals t-shirt, it just said Rational across the front, uh, which was Scott Morgan, Morgan's Detroit band. Uh, so that's really interesting and worth looking up on YouTube. So Hollywood Babylon kind of thing, which so you can just see the 1970s. The GTO is going on together right. regularly, so there's that related. So the coquette uh, to do with the living theatre, like a drag act pretty much, very like a hippie drag act, 
Uh, so you've really got two bits of 70s counterculture meet, 70s counterculture meeting. So you've got the kind of uh, hate and aggression of the Stooges, or the Milers of the Stooges, perhaps a better description. And then you've got the Kikettes, who are kind of the peace and love avant-garde. The lead guy from the Kikettes famously put a flower in a uh, soldier's rifle at Pentagon. Uh, there's famous pictures of that. So they're definitely tied up with the, you know, the hippie peace and love movement. Uh, it's a beautiful poster, Silver Ink. Uh, and would have been an amazing show where you've got these two polar opposites kind of clashing for the first time. So you've got the end of the 60s meeting, the beginning of the 70s maybe, with girls together outrageously thrown in. Uh, but the show never happened. And so that's just a, a kind of reminder of what would have been. A bit like, you know, Tears in the Rain from uh, the Android Stream of Electric Sheep. It's a lost moment in history. It's quite, it's, it's sad and glorious at the same time. This is a silver ink metallic poster, absolutely beautiful thing. I mean, you know, come in and have a look at it. It's just incredibly lovely and an amazing shot of Iggy there too at the top. Uh, that was a, a front cover of a local uh, Hollywood magazine. It's like a colour shot when you actually see the magazine. And there's a Stooges article in it if anybody can be bothered digging it out. Worth looking at though, it's a really nice thing. So this is a free John Sinclair festival poster. So John Sinclair, who's the manager of the MC5 and the leader of the White Panther Party, he uh, was arrested for possession of marijuana. And uh, this was to try and fund his defense. Uh, you've got Scott Richard Case, the MC5, the Orp, the Stooges, and neither who Scorpion are, which sounds pretty interesting. Uh, Bob Sager system, Detroit Reels, Nationals, Scott Morgan again, Brownsville Station, You've got all the usual suspects, Abby Hoffman, Ed Saunders, uh, you know, very lovely thing, MC5 famously use that marijuana burning flag classic graphic again, uh, and you've got a couple of nice white panthers on it. Uh, there were a couple of benefits for John Sinclair. There's also a nice little, ha nice little postcard handbill thing as well too, which he went to send to the governor to complain about his incarceration. I don't know if anybody did, but it's a nice thing anyway. And there's another poster, also by Gary Grimshaw, uh, where John Lennon's on the bill. It's got a big graphic of uh, uh, John Sinclair's face on it, but sadly no Stooges or MC5 on the bill at that time. I think the upper on the bill again. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is my preferred benefit because the five and the stitches are there. So another uh, small, this is a little handbill, it's not a postcard, for uh, the Stooges in Canada. Okay, so the Stooges go international for the first time. Uh, so this is the, the Stooges playing in Windsor, Canada, which is basically just across the uh, kind of lake or river from Detroit. It's not very far at all. Uh, but, you know, they have actually finally got out of Detroit, which is something, or finally got out of the USA. Uh, again, you've got Brownsville Station. I don't know who did the artwork for this one. Uh, it's pretty generic, but it's a, just a, you know, it's a super cool thing. You, know, you, can't, you can't beat a Stooges handbill. Uh, and, you know, super session, nice at Windsor Arena. God knows how many people were there, who knows? Uh, probably quite a few, I'm guessing. But anyway, there you go. So uh, this is a handbill for the Ludlow Garage in Ohio. Ohio were always pretty keen on the Stooges of the MC5 and generally like high energy rock and roll in general. Uh, hence you get later Pear Reboo, uh, you know, uh, Rocket from the Tombs, the Electric Eels, all that stuff. Okay, uh, because they're, they're seeing these bands play, you know. Uh, I once had a conversation with uh, Mike Rep out of Mike Rep and the Quotas, and he was saying that, uh, you know, uh, Scott Ashton was always hanging around and was a real badass motherfucker and you didn't want to mess with him. Uh, anyway, uh, it's got Groovies on the bill, uh, so usual suspects there, and then Golden Earring of Radar Love Fame also playing with the Stooges, so that'd be pretty interesting too, and then the week after you've got the MC5. It's like a great... Uh, Arabic carpet there too, so I don't know if that's an homage to Funhouse or not, but it's, it's a cool thing. There's also a red handbill for the MC5 later show, uh, but this happens to be the Blue Stooges one. These are both handbills by an artist called Carl Lundgren, they're both signed by him as well too. So quite interesting here. Um, so on the left hand side you've got John Mayall and the Psychedelic Stooges. 
if you look closely at the graphics, up kind of below the horse is all the detritus of American society. So I guess it's trying to say there's something new being built and it's, you know, like a hippie ideal. That's pretty interesting. And then on the right hand side, you've got Fleetwood Mac just post Sid Barrett Pink Floyd. Uh, so this is like July and Sid left in April. Uh, so they'd be playing in Stellar Overdrive and all that kind of business. In fact, they did play in Stellar Overdrive that night. And then you've got The Who as well, too. <coughs> so possibly, you know, some of the later Stooges sound, because here were very early psychedelic Stooges, is maybe influenced by the avant garde of the Floyd and maybe the big power of the Who. Ron Ashton, obviously a massive Who fan, had been to see the Who earlier on in the 60s when he'd uh, sold his motorbike to come to England with his brother. Uh, or was that Dave Alexander? I think it was Dave Alexander actually he went to London with. Uh, but anyway, brilliant show, massive lineup, and you'd never expect the Stooges to be on that kind of bill. Really amazing, like HP Lovecraft kind of crazy occult graphic. Really love that too. Uh, both a bit reminiscent of Frank Frazetta, especially the John Mayall uh, handbill. Uh, uh, but yeah, again, beautiful thing. So, uh, Rationals and Stooges Handbill, as I said earlier, the Rationals was Scott Morgan's band. Scott Morgan, later in, the Sonic Rendezvous band. Uh, the Rationals produced like a fan club only LP in Detroit, which is like, incredibly rare. Uh, but well worth checking out the Rationals, they also did an album for uh, Bob Crew uh, called Guitar Army, uh, which, is, which is worth a listen pretty cool. Uh, I can't remember who did the artwork for these, but it's a really lovely positive negative image. Two nights at the Palladium, this one. Uh, Stooges top of the bill, so obviously a show to watch. So this is a poster for the Woodrow Ballroom, uh, popular venue. Um, they posters for these things are pretty hard to find, has to be said. The, the poster for this was reproduced in the Stooges book, Top Chaos, but that is an original poster. If you put them side by side, you can see the loss of definition in the uh, reproduction. Um, so, really interesting bill. So you've got the Stooges with Chubby Checker, believe it or not, and Lobotomy. Now, I don't know who Lobotomy were, but if anybody out there knows anything about Lobotomy, I'd be fascinated to know. Chubby Checker though, okay well, he's not moving in much less, let's, let's twist again, this kind of bill I would have thought, but he did have a, a kind of psychedelic period, a heavy psych period, uh, with the album Checkered, and the fabulous single My Mind, which is well worth a listen, and then into the 70s, just a couple of pretty good singles, uh, one on London, and one on Pi, and also issued on 20th century, I don't know why. There are two, two different issues of that, which one came first, I was not know. But they're worth checking out, they're kind of good, kind of heavy, funky, psych rock tracks. So, it really interesting to see Chubby Checker on the bill. A great shot of Iggy without his top on, dancing around with some big jeans, and also Iggy being lobotomised by guitars, which is pretty cool. And also, now he's missing his front teeth, as he was on the first Stooges album, so he said, keep your mouth shut and airbrushed out his, uh, his scars around his eye because he got beaten up the night before. So a bit of, a, a bit of an interesting shot there. Uh, but really beautiful poster, uh, monochromatic. I don't know who did the graphics, but it's charming. This last poster, well, it's a 2010 poster, so it's much later than the others, but it does relate to 1973. Uh, and it's after a photo by Robert Mattel, who's also signed it, it's double signed. Uh, Shepard Fairley and Robert Mattel. Brilliant, uh, brilliant graphic, uh, really lovely thing. If you uh, come into the bar, there's a whole interview with Shepard Fairley explaining why he loves the Stooges and why you should check out Raw Power. I pasted it in verbatim, but I can't quote it for you, I'm afraid. Uh, but yeah, it's a really lovely thing, and because it fits in with the 1970. Three, I thought it would fit in with the rest of the posters. Uh, it was to do with the uh, you know deluxe reissue of Raw Power, and he wanted to do something for it, and it is, it is truly lovely. Anyway, thanks very much. <laughs>
And that was the exhibition, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, found something new. You learned something new. Um, I certainly did from these pictures. And uh, if you did, drop in the comments below. But um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, yeah, look out for more videos next week. Cheers.